Today's project is to make a wooden box with a motorcycle inlay and I'm going to use dovetail joints. And this is the timber I'm going to use. Got a bit of dark wood and a bit of light pine so I can get some nice contrast. I'm aiming for 6mm thick timber so I need to cut some slices off that block of dark wood and then I'll put everything through the thicknesser so that everything is the same thickness. This pine is a bit of wallboard, it's 10mm thick so it takes a few passes to get it down to the 6mm. And now for a bit of a sand, so that I don't have to do as much sanding when I've finished the box. I'm using some spray adhesive on the back of each of the pieces of paper with the plans on it and then I'll glue them onto the appropriate board. I'm using the dark wood for the sides of the board and the light wood for the ends so it gives a bit of contrast to the joints. The motorcycle is going to be made out of dark wood that's going to be inlaid into light but before I do that, I want to inlay some little light bits so that it sort of shows through the wheels. So that has to be inlaid into the dark bit first. So with the light wood on top of the dark wood, just use a bit of clear tape to join them together so they don't move around. I need to drill some pilot holes so that I can cut out the pieces and I'm drilling on a two and a half degree angle. By cutting out on an angle the top bit it will slide into the bottom bit because of the clearance of the width of the blade. Hmm that explanation's clear as mud but trust me it does work. So I set the saw at the appropriate angle of just a bit over 2 mil and then cut out the pieces. It's a little bit fiddly but it's not too bad. I'm using a number three blade for those who are interested. So there's the first little bit cut out and I'm using a ruler to put under it so that I don't lose the bits. It's the light coloured bit that I want to keep. So I just pop them out and there's the first little bit that I want. After doing all those bits I need to take off the tape and then I can start putting them in, in their appropriate hole. I didn't get the angle quite right and so they don't go all the way in. But that doesn't really matter because you can't see the back of it anyway. Once I've got them all in their places then I can take it over to the sander and just sand it flat. But first I'll glue them in place with a bit of super glue. So the first step of the inlay is done. Now to put the pattern back over the dark coloured wood. Then tape the dark wood over the light wood that's going to be the lid. I've decided I'll not only cut out the outline but I'll cut the style lines of the bike as well. With all the style lines cut, I set the saw to the two and a bit degree angle and then cut round the outline.
It's the top dark piece that I want. The light piece gets thrown away. So now it's time to remove that extra dark piece and take all the tape off. Now I'm ready with my inlay to put into the hole in the light lid. And this time I've got the angle pretty right. And just with a few tiny little taps, it goes into place. And some super glue secures it in the lid. I thought it'd be a smart idea to rub some light coloured sawdust into all of the style lines that I put on the bike. And I thought, hmm, this is going to work nicely. But of course I had to secure the sawdust in there by putting super glue over it. But it didn't work as planned as you'll see later. I don't have a dovetail jig, but using some cunning stuntery I can cut out the dovetails using the scroll saw. First of all I cut the angles. With the angles cut, I'm using a little jig that's the same angle as the cut, so I can slide the blade in and then turn it round to do the last cut. It's been a couple of years since I've done this sort of fine woodworking and it takes me a little while to get into the swing of things. So this first one goes very slowly. The rest of them, not so bad. This process is rather tedious, but it gets the job done and after all, I've got plenty of time. The other half of the dovetail process is pretty straightforward because they're all just straight cuts. Well, before I do all of the rest of them, let's make sure that the plan that I drew actually works. Yep, that looks pretty good. Fits nicely. With all the joints cut, it's time to assemble. And I'm quite happy because they're all fitting just snugly. With a bit of a tap, it all goes into place. Again, I'm just using super glue to secure all these corners. Super glue sands nicely and it doesn't show up when you stain or finish the timber. Now the lid. I'm cutting the lid out on an external angle because the lid is going to be a sliding type lid. Bit of hand sanding is always required at the end of a project. The latch for the lid is two magnets. So I've got one magnet in this post inside and the other magnet underneath the lid. So when it's slid right into the box, the magnets click together. I'm using a shellac mixture to finish the box. This is made with shellac flakes soaked in methylated spirits. The methylated spirits um, dries off very quickly so it's easy to put multiple coats on the thing in very short order. I put about a dozen applications of shellac on the box and then finish it off with some canuba wax. Canuba wax gives a nice shiny and hard wearing finish. Okay, here's the final box. And this is where you can see that my style lines inside the bike don't show up because the dark wood bled into the light wood 
and it was a failure, but it still looks okay. It's nice and shiny. And it's kept me busy for a few hours. So what am I going to use the box for? Well, I've got this set of punches that need a home. Maybe I'll use the box for those. They fit in, but really it's a bit of a waste of a box. I think it'll go to the grandkids instead. <laughs> 